another day to worship you all. Father, thank you for everything that you've been doing for us, providing for us, carrying us through, Lord God, giving us breath in our lungs, oh Lord God, waking us up every night, putting us to sleep every night so we can see another day to be energized to praise you and give you all the glory, oh Lord God. We thank you for keeping us under your blood, oh Lord God. We thank you for everything that you have been doing and have yet to do in our lives. And your will be done, oh Lord God. And we thank you, oh Lord God. We follow you day in and day out and hope to see you one day in heaven, oh Lord God. We thank you, oh Lord God. We thank you. We bow down to your name, oh Lord God, the most powerful name of all time, oh Lord God. And we thank you for everything that you have been doing for us inside us, spiritually and outside our bodies, physically, oh Lord God. You heal us. You provide for us. You put food on our table, roofs above our head, and clothes on our body, oh Lord God. And we thank you, oh Lord God, for everything that you are doing in us, oh Lord God. Helping us to grow, oh Lord God. Grow our spirits and grow our minds and knowledge in you, oh Lord God. And we thank you for keeping us day in and day out. Keeping us, giving us journeys and mercy enough to leave our house and returning home, oh Lord God. We thank you, oh Lord God, for walking us through the valleys of the shadow of death, oh Lord God. We thank you for being right by our side. Whenever we have no one else to touch, you will be there, oh Lord God. We thank you. For everything that you have been doing, Lord, Father God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 All right. So now you be seated. Yes. Thank you. My poem is just about like how like God's name changes the situation. Amen. I've been in church for a while and I've heard a plenty amount of testimonies. And there is always one phrase that always sticks out to me, but God. I was sick and the doctor said I could never have kids, but God. Amen. I should have died in that horrible car accident, but God. Amen. I was homeless thinking these times of sorrow would never end, but God. Amen. But God took me through that surgery. Yeah. But God spared my, spared my life in that car crash. Amen. But God delivered me and provided for me endlessly. Yes. So no matter how hard the trials are that God may send, just remember that the Lord is your shepherd and you too will say, but God, in the yes. end.
God, we bless your name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, you're worthy. You're worthy, you're worthy. Hallelujah. I just want you to do me a favor. Just speak Jesus in the atmosphere. Just say Jesus in the atmosphere. Jesus in my family. Jesus in my house. Jesus in school. Jesus on my job. Jesus in the government. Just declare the name of Jesus. Jesus in the church. Hallelujah. Just declare the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We are making a declaration today, Father. Hallelujah. That we are declaring the name of Jesus in this place. Hallelujah. So we're going to sing this song. I speak Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we're going to declare Jesus in this place. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I just want to speak the name of Jesus Amen. over every heart and every mind. Because I know there is peace within your presence. I speak Jesus. I just want to speak. Jesus from the mountains, Jesus in the streets. 
we can give him our thanks for everything that he has promised. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you, Lord.
command, and I'll start with verse 10. It says, For thus saith the Lord, that after seventy years be accomplished at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good word towards, toward you, and causing you to return to this place. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Amen. Second Corinthians 7. Verses one, verse 1. Amen. Let's read that all together if you have it. It says, Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Amen. Amen. Let's bow our heads in a word of prayer. God, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for this day. Oh, God, we thank you, Lord Jesus, just for your presence, Lord God. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you choose to dwell with us, oh God. We thank you for being holy, for being righteous, oh God. Hallelujah, Jesus, for being omnipotent, oh God. Hallelujah, Jesus, Lord God. There are endless things that we can say about you, Lord God, but we just love you, oh God. And I pray, Lord Jesus, that you would just, Lord God, let your word rest in our hearts today, Lord God. Lord Jesus, let it encourage uh, those who hear it, Lord Jesus. Help us, Lord God, to continue to walk pure before you, Lord God. And I pray, God, that you would bless the young people people, Lord Jesus, that you would just continue to move within their lives, within their hearts, Lord God. Thank you for their obedience to you, Lord Jesus. Lord God, we thank you, Lord, and we praise you, O God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. So on today, the title of this message is We Have Hope. All right. Amen. Amen. Look at a neighbor and say, you and I have hope. You Amen. And I have hope. Amen. So hope in the King James Dictionary um, is defined as a desire of good with an expectation that it is obtainable. And the Holman Bible Dictionary summarizes it by saying that it is the guarantee that Christians can participate in what God will do in the future because of what he has done in the past. All right. So hope is having confidence that God's promises will come to pass. And the reason that we believe, that we have this belief is through our faith. Hebrews 11 and 1, it says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. The Amplified Version of the scripture says that faith is the assurance or confirmation of things divinely guaranteed. Faith understands what cannot be experienced through our physical senses as fact. So as believers, we believe in the blessings that have not yet been fulfilled. We may not see it. Um, but we know and we trust in who God is, so we believe that God is going to bring those blessings to pass. Um, but how many would agree with the point that even as believers, sometimes our hope gets low? I can raise my hand and say that. <laughs> um, Ephesians 3 and 20, it says, Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask or think, according to the power that works within us. So we can read that scripture and say, Lord, okay, I've been saved. So um, I'm going to pray that you'll heal me. I'm going to pray that you bless my family and help me be financially stable. And that means that the Lord is going to exceed that, supersede that. Um, but weeks or months or years pass by and nothing has happened yet um, in terms of what we are praying for. Or maybe the exact results of what we prayed for has happened. Maybe we've prayed for God to heal the sick and they pass. Or um, we, we ask God to help us fulfill our purpose and we go and do something and it gets denied. But let's look at this scripture again in the Amplified Version. It says, now to him who is able to carry out his purpose Amen. and do super abundantly above our greatest dreams, prayers, or hope. So as believers, we must realize that God's plan for our lives is based on his perfect plan and timing and not ours. Um, but whatever God chooses to do, it will still be the best outcome for us because he is sovereign and he knows um, what to do. So it may be that, that my dream doesn't exactly match God's dream, but, it, but whatever God wants to do in my life is still the best option for me. And so today, I want to look at an example of a man who believed God but also had times where his hope was low. And so this man's name is Elijah, who was a prophet during treacherous times in Israel. Um, the king of the nation of Israel was Ahab, and he wanted all the people to worship Baal, um, a false idol. And so he made an alliance with Sidon and married Jezebel, who was killing godly prophets. And Elijah was called to defend and proclaim God. 
<clears throat> so in 1 Kings 18, that's where we're going to spend most of our time today. 1 Kings 18, um, God speaks to Elijah and tells him to go and meet Ahab, and God is going to send rain upon the earth. And so God, go so Elijah goes to do that, and he meets Obadiah, who is the uh, governor of Israel. And so Obadiah was a man who served God, and um, he, uh, he, because he served God, when Jezebel was killing all of these godly prophets, he goes and he hides a hundred of them and feeds them so that they won't be killed. And so um, Elijah goes and he meets Obadiah and he says, all right, Obadiah, I'm here, let's go meet Ahab. And um, in verse 9 of, of 1 Kings 18, it says, And he said, What have I sinned that thou wouldest deliver thy servant into the hand of Ahab to slay me? As the Lord God thy God liveth, there is no nation or kingdom where whither my Lord hath not sent to seek thee. And when they said he is not there, he took an oath on, of the kingdom and nation that they found thee not. So as Elijah says, let's go meet Ahab. Obadiah says, are you crazy? Basically, <laughs> like, don't you know that you're the most sought out person um, on this uh, this country right now, um, that the king is already looking for you? And then 13, it says, was it not told my Lord what I did when Jezebel slew the prophets of the Lord, how I hid a hundred men of the Lord's prophets by 50 in a cave and fed them with bread and water? And so I assume that Obadiah might be thinking that, like, you know, I'm, I'm already um, hiding myself, and if they know that I'm with you, they're going to kill me too. And so verse 15, Elijah says, As the Lord of hosts liveth, before whom I stand, I will surely show myself unto him today. Um, and so Obadiah went to meet Ahab and told him, and Ahab went to meet Elijah. And so they meet, and uh, Ahab, he tells Elijah, aren't you the one who's causing all this trouble in Israel? And um, Elijah's saying, no, I'm not the one who's doing that. You're the one who's um, causing disruption by um, serving false idols. And so Elijah says, I want you to call together 450 prophets and uh, 400 other prophets. So uh, a total of 850 prophets of Asherah. Um, and Ahab, he does that. He calls the prophets without question. And um, Elijah, he calls all these people together and he says, listen, you prophets, like you need to figure out who you're going to serve. Are you going to serve Baal or are you going to serve God? You need to figure out are you going to serve the world or are you going to serve the Lord? And so he puts out a test um, in verse 23. He says, let them therefore give us two bullocks and let them choose one bullock for themselves and cut it in pieces and lay it on wood and put no fire under it. And I will dress the other bullock and lay it on wood and put no fire under it. And call ye on the name of your gods, and I will call on the name of the Lord. And the God that answered my fire, let him be God. And all the people answered and said, it is well spoken. So the prophets of Baal, they go forth and they call the bull, which is another word for bullock. And they um, prepare it, they kill it, they put it on the wood, and they say, Baal, please answer. And no answer. And so they start, um, they start jumping up and down. They start cutting themselves, like screaming, like, no, we an answer. <laughs> no answer. And so Elijah, he starts mocking them, and he's like, maybe you're not saying it loud enough. Maybe, yeah, maybe they can't hear you. Maybe he's asleep. Like, maybe do some more. And so um, still don't get any answer. And so, um, and then Elijah, he goes through the same procedure. He um, prepares the bull, and he fills some water with barrels. I mean, he fills barrel with, barrels with water, and then he prays, and he asks God, Lord, show yourself, um, prove that you are the Lord. And so, in verse 38, it says, Then the fire of the Lord fell, and consumed the burnt sacrifice, and the wood, and the stones, and the dust, and looked up the water that was in the trench. And so, this proves that God is the only true and living God, um, so God shows himself in that. And because of the false worship that these prophets have been giving um, to Baal, they all, Elijah calls for them all to be killed. And so, um, so in, in chapter 19, that's where I want to get to, um, Ahab, King Ahab tells, um, Eli, uh, tells Jezebel, his wife, what's going on. And, um, and then in verse... 1 Kings 19 and 2. Um, then Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah, saying, So let the gods do to me, and more also, 
if I make not thy life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. And uh, so Jezebel, she's saying, um, look, like, you killed all my prophets, that's what's going to happen to you now. And so and if it doesn't happen, kill me because of what you did. And so um, in verse 3 it says, And when he saw that, he arose and went for his life and came to Beersheba, which belonged to Judah, and left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey unto the wilderness and came and sat down under a juniper tree. And he requested for himself that he might die and said, It is enough now. O Lord, take away my life, for I am not better than my father's. And so as Elijah hears this, he, uh, he's, it's so fearful for him and causing him such great distress that he's ready for God to just kill him. Um, contemplating suicide at this point. And so um, I believe that uh, that what what Jezebel said uh, was causing him so much pressure, but I believe that Elijah may have been feeling stressed at other points in his life. That's just what I'm assuming. Um, because, like, we don't know, but Elijah, he could have been fearful when he told Obadiah, let's go meet King Ahab. The man has literally been trying to kill me, and I'm just going to pop up and say, here I am. <laughs> so I believe that that Elijah uh, was under such great stress and fear um, from these little G gods mm-hmm. and not trusting in his God right. who created him, right. but but believing that these little gods, false idols, had the ability to um, kill him. But whatever the case, it disturbed him so much to the point of considering death. Yeah. And so um, so right after that. Um, in verse 5 it says, and, he, and as he lay and slept under a juniper tree, um, let's just stop there. He slept. Yeah. Right after that, he just went to sleep. Um, and so I want to ask you the question, um, have you ever been so anxious uh, to the point where the only way that you feel you can get rid of the stress is to sleep? Or have you ever cried yourself to sleep? And so sometimes our bodies just have to rest. Like yeah. stop worrying about it and yeah. go to sleep. And then um, afterwards, uh, following that verse, then an angel touched him and said unto him, Arise and eat. So if you're ever feeling low, just get some food. Um, I'm just kidding. But, you know, he, he goes and he gets some rest and then he eats. And that happens a couple more times. And then um, in verse 9, it says, And he came thither unto a cave and lodged there. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him. And said, and he said unto him, What doest thou here, Elijah? And Elijah says, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts, for the children of Israel uh, have, not, have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thy altars, and slain thy prophets with the sword. And I, even I only, am left, and they seek my life to take it away. And so Elijah, he's saying, look, I'm, I've tried to serve you, um, but Israel is not. And I'm sure that Elijah, he's, he's looking at all these prophets dying, and he's like, who's to say that that's not going to happen to me? Um, and so... Um, God says, go forth and stand in the mountain of the Lord, stand in my presence. And so uh, a great wind passes by, um, and then an earthquake happens, but God is not in either of those um, events. And then a fire passes by, um, but God is still not in any any of those uh, in that fire either. Um, And then in verse 12, it says, And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still, small voice. And it was so when Elijah heard it. And so I just want to stop there and point out something that sometimes, at least for me, I think I'm looking for a grand, big gesture, like a a huge thing for God to show me that this is what I need to do or or that God has spoken to me. But often God is going to speak to us in a still, calm voice. Um, He is a peaceful. God, and so we have to be able to, to have patience and listen for him um, to, to speak to us in the way that he chooses to, and also pay attention to those small details. And so, um, verse 15, uh, the Lord said unto him, Go return on thy way to the wilderness of Damascus, and when thou comest, anoint Haziel to be king over Syria, and Jehu the son of Nipshi. Um, shalt thou anoint to be king over Israel, and Elijah the son of Shaphat, of Abiel, Mehola, shalt thou anoint to be thy prophet in thy room. Um, and it shall come to pass that him that escapeth the sword of Haziel shall Jehu slay, and him that escapeth 
from the sword of Jehu shall Elijah slay. So this, these, past, these scriptures are saying that um, anoint these different kings um, over these lands, and they're going to be killing each other off, be committed to evil, um, and not doing the work of the Lord. But in verse 18, it says, Yet I have left me 7,000 in Israel, all the knees which have not bowed unto Baal, and every mouth which have not kissed him. And so God is trying to show Elijah that, yes, there are people in this world that are doing wicked, committed to evil, not serving God, but there are still a remnant of people who serve me, who are not going to bow down to false idols, who are not going to follow after the world. Um, and so you can trust in me and, and know that you are protected. You don't have to follow after what uh, the world is doing, and you don't have have to feel alone um, in that Amen. and so um, and so uh, this just shows the 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 speed of which God wants to help us yeah. um, Psalms 46 and 1 it says God is our refuge and strength a very present yeah. help in trouble yeah. and so uh, this means that God is, is able to help us whenever we need us present yeah. means right now that when you need the help God is there to um, send us the strength that we need um, and encouragement and so this hope applies to us today. So as we go through difficulties, we shouldn't just think, well, this is it. I don't know how I'm going to get through this. I don't know if I'm ever going to see the end of this. Because we have hope in Jesus. Um, we, have the, we don't have to feel like our life is over at any point in time. Because God has made us promises uh, that we will get through it. Um, and so going back to Jeremiah 29 um, and 10, it says... Uh, for thus saith the Lord that after 70 years be accomplished at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good word toward you and causing you to return to this place. Um, verse 11, for I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. And so in verse 10 it's saying, because of their cap the people of Jerusalem, they were under um, captivity because of their sin, but God makes a promise to them that after um, this time period of 70 years, they're going to be able to, return, to return to their original land. Um, and so everyone who's under this promise of, uh, who was in that land had that same promise of hope and restoration. And so in verse 11, as it says that the Lord has a good plan for us, thoughts of peace, and not of evil to give you an expected end, um, it, it shows that God knows exactly what he wants to do in our life. And the, and the things that God wants to do for us is are good and um, going to help us to prosper. Yeah. And so um, let's think back to Elijah. So Elijah served God. He believed in God. And he heard directly from God. Um, he was a prophet. And so yet he was such in a, he was in such a great estate of fear and anxiety that he asked God to kill him. And so if he, if a man of God is on the verge of committing suicide, if that's the case for him, I want you to think about how a lost and hurting world feels. Um, there are people who are going through life and wondering what's the purpose, why am I here, um, and they're following after the things that they see in the world because that's what's in front of them. And I'm not talking about people who are just straight up evil. You try to talk to them. They don't really care. Um, that's between them and God. I'm talking about people who are really searching for meaning. And, and maybe they fulfill that search through people that they've been with or drugs or whatever the case may be. But they need um, light too. They need to be able to know that God loves them. And they need to feel that love um, from the body of Christ. And so Philippians 2 and 14, it says, Do all things without murmurings and disputings, that you may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom you shine as lights in the world. And so, we have to make sure um, that we are, are able to be the light um, in dark places. Like, if we're all, if we just stay all in, in a well-lit room, then our lights are going to continue to shine. But 
that's going to be it. We have to be able to make sure that we are going to the dark places. Yeah. And, and not yeah. saying that we have to live in darkness, right. which right. I call yeah. somebody come to come the light, yeah. but yeah. that we are making sure that we are, are, are showing love to people right. and, and letting them know that they have hope too. Come on, come on. Um, in 2 Corinthians 7 and 1, it says, Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. And so, since it is a guarantee that we can reap the promises and the blessings of God, we have to make sure that our lifestyle reflects one of faith, that we actually live like we believe in the promises of God and don't feel the need to even engage in the things of the world. We know that, that next week is October 31st, and, and people are going to be out um, celebrating and doing all kinds of evil, but we have to make sure that, that our entire lifestyle, our entire conversation um, reflects one that we, where we trust in God and we don't engage in those things. And so, uh, and so I, as I end today, I just want to encourage you not to lose hope. Uh, maybe you've been walking with God for 5 or 10 or 15 years and the things that you've been praying for, you haven't seen the fulfillment of it yet. Um, but you have to know that as believers, that the promises of God are yours, yeah. that they belong to you. Yeah. Um, I'm sure that the people of Jerusalem, they were they were told 70 years, and, and, and it could have been at some point they were like, Lord, I know you said 70 years, but it's 60 years. Are you still going to do this? <laughs> and so, um, you know, you have to know that, that if it's in God's will, it's uh -huh. going to happen yeah. for you. And there's uh -huh. nothing that's in God's will that's going to harm you. Yeah. Um, and yeah. so you have to trust in, in God regardless how, of however long it takes. And if you don't know God um, or have a relationship with him, you have that same opportunity to receive hope and grace. Yeah. Um, John 3 and 16, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. And so God loves you. That's, yes. that's as simple as I can put it. Um, it doesn't matter who you are, what you've been, what you've gone through. Um, God promises whoever believes to have eternal life. Yes. And so it doesn't matter what state you are in, you have hope. Uh -huh. Amen. God bless you. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. We have hope by Maverick City as we bring forth our presence. Thank you, Jesus. You are present, hope of God. You are present, hope. As I walk through the valleys of darkness and shadow. I will not fear because there's more that follows you because we have hope in Jesus he's a present help and redeemer as long as I
hope and faith go hand in hand in camp. Hallelujah. We have hope in Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for your death. message to remind each of us that no matter where you are, you let that play in the background, just keep it down low. Thank you, Jesus. That no matter what we're facing, no matter what we're doing, we have hope in Jesus. Sometimes what we go through, we forget that we are people of hope. Sometimes our challenges seem insurmountable. Or maybe you prayed and you have an answer. Or God, you haven't received an answer yet from God. And you're wondering, you're wondering, you're wondering, do we have hope? Do we have hope? I want to let you know today that we do have hope. Each and every one of you have hope. The Bible lets us know that if in this world, amen, we have no hope, then we are, of all men, most miserable. To live in this world and not have hope in God makes one miserable. But I'm here to let you know today, you can have hope. And if you've been trying to navigate this life without hope, I want to bring encouragement to you today and help you to understand hope is available for you. Hallelujah. Life is available for you. You're not in this thing by yourself. Hallelujah. We are in this thing together, but most of all, we have the Lord on our side. We have the Lord who is with us. We have the Lord who is keeping us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is our shade upon our right hand. It doesn't matter that the arrow flies by day or that there's pestilence at night. None of that matters. Hallelujah. Yes, COVID affected every single one of us, but you know what? Hallelujah. That was just God trying to get our attention. You know why? Because God is sovereign. There's nothing that takes place on this planet that God doesn't know about or God doesn't allow. No matter what you're facing, God already knows what you're dealing with. So if you want things to change, guess what we need to do? Hallelujah. We need to reach out to the one who has the ability to make things change. And I want to say this because sometimes we want God to change our situations when what God is trying to say to us, I'm not going to change your situation, but what I'm trying to do is use the situation to change you. Hallelujah. God is trying to change us. He's trying to change our hearts. He's trying to redirect our path. Hallelujah. And realign ourselves back with Him again. Amen? Hallelujah. Tell somebody, I need to be realigned. I need to be realigned. And so God has come to reestablish hope in each and every one of us. Hallelujah. We have hope. We have hope. You can have hope today. If you're here today, let's go ahead and bring that down further. Thank you, Jesus. Say, man, just put the instrumental on. Thank you, Jesus. If you are in need of hope today, I want to take this opportunity to pray with you. Amen. Because I recognize that somebody needs hope today. And listen, I, I don't want you to be ashamed. Don't worry about who's watching because that's, that's not what matters. What matters is, is that we can receive what our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ has to provide for us. We can receive what he has available to us. But you have to come to receive, amen, what he has available. I want to ask you a question. When your birthday comes around or Christmas comes around, those times of the year when we like to receive gifts from others, if I come to you and I have a gift in my hand and I say, this is for you, I can hold it in my hand all day, but what is your responsibility to do? you got to reach out and grab that gift. Hope is available for you. But you have to be willing to reach out and grab it. I'm tired of all the theologians and preachers in various different circles telling folks that they don't have to do anything. That's a lie from the pit. Listen, you are responsible for what you do. God does what he does. Don't get me wrong. Hallelujah. We are saved by grace through God. Amen. But there are things that God requires of us. What does He require? He requires that we repent. Come on, come on. He requires that we believe in Him. He requires that we have faith. Yes. And then He requires that we become obedient to the baptismal yes. command. He requires that we do something. Yes. Hallelujah. So when God offers you hope and He offers His salvation, it's available to you, but now you have a responsibility to receive it. 
It doesn't just happen by osmosis. You are responsible. Hope is available to you, but you have to be willing to reach out and take hold of it. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Is anybody here today? Amen. You just want prayer for hope. Amen. Yes, listen, there are times in our life when each and every one of us, we feel like our, our hope is waned. We feel like our faith has waned. I'm reminded of the words, hallelujah. Amen. Of the man that Jesus prayed for, he came to Jesus. Amen. God bless you. Come on, sir. Amen. Come on, doctor. God bless you. Amen. What, what are your names? Mario. Mario. Lavina. Mario. God bless you. understand it right now, but God, you know all things are done, hallelujah, because you are sovereign, and because you know us, and because you know what you are working out in us, God, you take us through a purpose, Lord, you take us through a process that was uniquely designed, oh God, to bring us to this point in our lives, oh God, the crossroads where we have an opportunity, God, to make a decision, oh God, to move in your direction, oh God, and I ask, Lord, that you would touch him right now. Oh, God, the questions that he has. Oh, God, the aspirations, God, that you have put within him. Oh, God, dreams that seem dead, but, God, you said they're not dead. Hallelujah, they're just dormant. And, God, I pray, Lord, that you would resurrect them right now in the name of Jesus, Lord. And I ask that you would restore in him, oh, God, what you showed him a long time ago. In the name of Jesus, do it for your glory. And, Father, right now, for your daughter, Bavina, Lord, she has asked, Lord, for your purpose, oh, God, to be fulfilled in her life, Lord. Hallelujah. So reveal now through your word, oh God, purpose that you have already established, Lord. And I pray, Lord, that you would help her to commit herself unto you, to walk in it, to do it. Hallelujah. To pursue it. Oh God. Hallelujah, Lord. And even, Lord, if, if she's not able, Lord, to hear your voice, Lord. Hallelujah. But impress, oh God, within her heart, Lord, so tough that she cannot get away from what you are explaining unto her, for what you are showing her, Lord, for the visions, oh God, and the dreams that you are giving her. Lord, there are things that are unexplainable, God, but you are bringing it to pass. Help her to understand it. Oh God, together, bless them both, Father. We just thank you and we honor you right now. For Lord, you are worthy. And we bless you now in the precious name of Jesus. We love you, Lord, for your faithfulness. And we thank you, Lord, that you do indeed hear the cries of your people. And so we thank you now for hearing their prayer and for hearing their cry. And we ask now that you would fulfill it, Lord, for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you. Not yet. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. All right. We'll leave it right there. Amen. Listen, God bless you both. I'm Pastor Joel. Pleasure to meet you. All right. Amen. Pastor Pastor Joel. This is my wife, Pastor Michelle. Come on, family. Hallelujah. 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 Yes. I'm so glad to see you. Yes. 
see you oh, this morning. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's, yeah. that's, that's all right. right. We got you. You're right here. You're right here. Sit you, Bonner. God bless you. Thank you. Hallelujah. I want to know your specific prayer request as we want to pray with you. Hallelujah. Heal my name. Healing is fine. All right. All right. So you're asking God for healing. Yeah. Okay. You know, God is already, he's already healed other areas. Yeah. I think so. Yeah, yeah. So, so you know. Yes. 